Well, Vern, old buddy, it's good to see you could make it. My trusty colleague. And of course, where's our other buddy there? Oh, my golly, it's Hair of the Dog, Sparky. Looks like you got into it a little bit earlier. Ah, you couldn't wait, eh? Anyways, hope you haven't had too much. We've got a big, long review ahead of us. So we're on the whiskey trail again here in Scotland, and we're going to clear up a little confusion. As we search out this distillery that we do, we're doing a review on right now, Knock Do Distillery, which is the home of Anak Bottlings. And why is that? Why are they not calling it Knock Do the Bottling? Uh, part of the reason for that was there was a time that Knock Do put that name on its label, but when Inverhouse took over the distillery, they, they, they decided there was a lot of confusion with Noctu Distillery and another distillery that was actually built prior to Noctu. And that distillery is in the Speyside region, on the Spey River, and it is called Nockendu, and it's owned by Diageo. So there is Nockendu, an old distillery owned by Diageo, that has knock and do on its label. And of course, over here in the Highland region, we have knock do. And of course, Inverhouse, when they took over the company, decided this is nonsense. We can't be selling knock do. It's just going to get confused with knock and do, which is, was a very established and successful brand. So they felt for marketing reasons and less confusion, let's just call it Anok, which is Gaelic for the hill and basically right in this area here we call that area knock and of course the hill knock sits right there and anok means the hill in gaelic and because we are pronouncing it gaelic we do not pronounce the c it's not pronounced ank knock it's pronounced anok So basically, we are in the Highland, but we're right next to the Speyside, and sometimes it's only a few kilometers the difference. So, uh, this is Noctu Distillery, but we do not see Noctu on the bottle, we see Anok. And that's right, we don't pronounce the C, it's Gaelic. And it means the hill, because the distillery, the Noctu Distillery, looks at a large hill called Knock Hill. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit of a history on this first, and then we'll talk about the whiskey. Uh, it, it basically goes back to 1893 during the whiskey boom. And the, the, the huge company DCL back in, I think they formed in, 18, in 1877, and that was the uh, John Hagg. He was the, uh, the founder of it, and he grouped together with a, a bunch of other grain distillers, and they formed ECL, and this was their first distillery that they built, and um, they were actually, it was uh, John Morrison representing uh, DCL, he, he purchased the land uh, because of the location to the railway, right next to the railway in Knock, Knock Station. Uh, in the small village of Nock. And also, it is prime grain country, some of the best barley grown in Scotland. And of course, water. There, were, there was good water from Nock Hill, 
uh, and it's the quality of that water that made the decision to purchase and build uh, Nokdu. Now, um, DCL basically used this in their blends. And it had a pretty good run uh, right up into the 30s there. It, 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 had, it had some slow, slowdowns, not, not any major mothballing, but some slowdowns. But um, it, uh, it eventually uh, changed ownership, and it was, uh, it was actually Scottish uh, distillers that uh, ended up purchasing it. Uh, in 19, Scottish malt distillers in 1930. And um, then in 1983, Scottish malt distillers decided to uh, mothball it. And that was during the whiskey lock, where a lot of companies got themselves in trouble. And, uh, you know, this was one of those companies during the whiskey boom, and now suddenly it's, it does not have a, a great future. But uh, fortunately, a company called Inverhouse ended up purchasing it. And they got it going the next year. And they did some work on the, on the distillery. And uh, they actually, they, they, they decided that the name Nokdu was too close to the more established distillery owned by Diageo, and that's Nokendu. And uh, Knock and Do, of course, was getting confused with Knock Do, and they dis they felt that for marketing reasons, let's change the name. We're not going to change the name of the distillery. We'll change the name on the label, Anak. And so uh, that was the first bottling of Anak. And uh, in 2001, Pacific Spirits, a huge Taiwan conglomerate beverage company, ends up purchasing. Uh, the the Inverhouse brand there uh, for eighty five million dollars, and uh, now they have control of Nokdu. But the interesting thing is that uh, this brand does not seem to be hurt from that conglomerate. A lot of the big conglomerates we uh, we get concerned, but um, there's some good things going on at that distillery. Um, in 2014, they uh, had their first peated uh, presentation. And what can I tell you about the, uh, the whiskey itself is that uh, it's 46%. It's non-shell filtered. There is no coloring added. So basically, I would say it's almost like a craft distillery. It's not a big distillery. It's not a huge production distillery. It's got a capacity of about 1.75 million liters annually. Uh, it's got kind of a slow fermentation time, 60 hours. And of course we know it, it produces uh, mostly on peated presentations. They do have a peated presentation up to 48 ppm. It has a uh, semi-loader style mash ton. And the new made strength uh, is 69%. Now the spirit still has a capacity of about 16,600 days. Charge is around 14,300 liters. And uh, the wash still capacity is about 12,000 liters and its charge is around 11,300. So we've got uh, five washbacks. I think they're made out of pine and they're around 30,000 liters. We're looking at uh, the water source from Knock Hill. That's the hill that, the, uh, that is in front of the distillery. Uh, it's called the Four Springs of Knock Hill, the water source. And basically, uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's the facts. And let's get on to the review. Here we are, Encock 18. Let's open her up and let's find out what it's all about. I'll be honest with you, I've never drank anything from the Nocdu distillery before. So this is a first for me. No previous experience with this distillery or this whiskey. 
So, um, always excited, you know, when I uh, had done a little bit of reading on it. And there is some uh, reviewers that I have high respect for that give this a pretty good rating. So, some uh, say that it is a, a whiskey they're still trying to discover. <laughs> Overall, it's had more really positive reviews. So, that's usually enough to prompt me to to go out and buy an 18, which is nowadays a little pricey, so. Oh, we forgot our glass. So I was so excited, I forgot my glass. Anyways, I did get up the hill I, after I was working on this uh, review there a little earlier, getting the history and all that of this uh, distillery, doing a little research on it. And I went up uh, the mountain there and went for a bit of cross country, had a good workout. So my nose should be fairly, fairly good here for, for uh, sensing the, uh, the notes. And uh, I'm kind of excited about this. Anyways, there it is. Ancock, An Anok, not Ancock, Anok. We do not pronounce the C, Anok. So let's get right into it. The nose. Oh, I got a nice little uh, mix of stuff going on now. Uh, kind of like a, a sweet tangerine leather smell. That's a first. I don't think I've ever had a descriptor like that before. It's um, even maybe some sweet herbal notes to it. It's different. I did read one review where a guy said that he found the nose a little lighter than the palate. He liked the palate, but he found the nose a little weak. I sure don't. <laughs> maybe you should go get, do some aerobic. Might clear his nose. This has got a good nose to it. You know, it's not intense, but there's apples and um, melons and the leather is there as well. Yeah, we're getting some berries. So I'm getting those. Um, the floral blueberries that we we get uh, here, we there. I forget what the, which uh, they're a special abrita berry that uh, I pick on a berry farm. They're quite delicious, but they they have such a nice aroma. And this has got a little bit of that, but it's got a lot of apple in it. Apple peel. And um, I'm getting a little bit of um, something tart, something citrusy. Um, oh, I wonder what it is there. That's the problem is that you're, you're trying to identify, it's, it's a whole new drink for me. And just trying to uh, identify the um, something, uh, it's kind of a, a greenhouse, uh, being in a greenhouse. And do you get that um, sort of a, almost like between, uh, you know, something, you know, uh, grassy, um, flowers, grass, um, those smells you get in a greenhouse depending on what's growing, of course. But I'm getting strawberries now. And you know, it might be just that citrus note, it might be just something like an orange. Really, that's probably what it is. But uh, I'm gonna say those apples are red delicious. And um, the, the leather's not as prominent now. It was when I first, uh, when I first noticed it, but it's funny. I'm 
I'm not getting a lot of uh, the real sweet notes that I normally get with it with the sherry influence, like like the vanillas, the caramels, and all that. Um, I'm getting more of those uh, bright fruits, like I say, like the the delicious apple, and um, pie, and, and and maybe some pineapple. Yeah, definitely some pineapple as well, peaches and pineapple. Nice, yeah. <clears throat> I'll just take it away for a bit here, and we'll give it another shot there. I like it. I like what I'm getting. Um, it's because it's different. You know, I haven't had uh, I haven't had a nose like this for for a while. So uh, now we're getting a little bit bit more of the sweetness. Um, I think uh, instead of the leather, I'm going to say that some it's wood. It's wood. We're getting a bit of that wood, that eight, the eighteen year old wood. You know, it's it's not overpowering though. But uh, with it's coming uh, maybe a little bit of um, almonds or marzipan um, and a slight bit of uh, the spices are moving in now. Uh, maybe, maybe it's cocoa and some spices in the background, nutmeg, maybe clove, clove powder, wee bit of allspice maybe. And I always seem to get, eventually, it comes the cinnamon. <laughs> the cinnamon seems to eventually come. Wow. Lots going on there. Lots going on. Impressive. Anyways, um, I wasn't going to make this a lengthy one. Uh, so, uh, had a pretty long day there. So, we're going to get into the palette. <laughs> so... Slash. Spicy. It's a nice spice. It's a nice spice. And, uh, We'll call it a sweet spice. I think I'm getting a, I'm finally getting my caramel now, but it's spicy. It's a spicy caramel. Not a burn, spicy. The, uh, the burn might be there if it wasn't for the spice. Um, it's a 46. You know, they're, 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 whatever, whatever I'm getting here seems to cover up the alcohol. The, uh, the spice, the spice is, I'm going to say, oh, what are we getting here? A little bit of nutmeg, sweet nutmeg. Oh boy, way in the background. I mean, I haven't smoked in years, but a slight slight hints of tobacco and um, it, it's got a nice mouth coating boy almost creamy chocolate mousse dark dark chocolate mousse let's refresh it Now that my uh, mouth is climatized to the um, to this to this drink here, I am getting the sweet. I'm getting ripe fruit, cherries. Those apples aren't so much; uh, they're not delicious now. They're actually um, almost like a cooked apple. You know, like an apple pie. But creamy. Even the orange, it's like a sweet, sweet orange. And uh, I mean, I'm getting little flashes of something that's 
you know, I had those leather notes, and there's something related to it that I'm tasting. You know, not really tasting leather, but there's something there. Um, maybe it's the maybe it's the oak tannins I'm getting, possibly the oak tannins. So, but um, yeah, it's a, that's what it is. I think I think it's the oak. Eighteen years, <clears throat> you know, I didn't let my glass sit for eighteen minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I could have uh, been a little better prepared, poured it uh, 15 minutes early, but I was busy tonight. I wanted to sneak this review in, so sometimes we cheat a bit, but I'm enjoying this. Um, I'm certainly not having a problem with it. <clears throat> this is quite interesting. Yeah, cooked apples, allspice. Uh, the vanilla is there now. Yeah, almost like uh, you know, maybe some toast. But the um, the spices are always present. Uh, if not pepper, a little bit of nutmeg, maybe maybe allspice. But um, it, it, it's, it's the creaminess, uh, the, the dark chocolate, maybe, um, maybe some dates. Um, wow, uh, nice, nice uh, interplay between the spice and the sweet. Um, it, you know, toward the toward the end here, I'm 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 getting more of the the dark the dark fruits, or maybe it's the darker sugars. When I say the darker sugars, more um, the 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 real sweet um, demerara, and um, it is fading so. Uh, uh, top it up a bit. We're going to do our finish. I'm enjoying this. I'm having some fun. Always kind of <laughs> you spend how much on this? This is a hundred. This is a two hundred dollar bottle now. I'm certain this wasn't. It wasn't even close to that a few years ago. But mind, this is a new bottling. They didn't even have this a few years back. The eighteen. So this is a, and I don't, I'm sort of told it was a limited bottling, so I got it at a specialty shop, but uh, I don't know how many were bottled, so uh, I got the last bottle, and uh, the guy kind of told me, maybe talked me into it, he said, it, it, it went fast, and he said, that's our last bottle, I don't know if we're going to get any more, I kind of bought into it, so you can't get it at the uh, BC liquor store, so I probably pick it up at some of the other specialty stores there, but I, I, there's nowhere I can find it less than 200 so if somebody knows of it less than 200 please let me know <laughs> because I, I, I do like this stuff it's nice anyways to the finish well it just gets better it's uh, the spices have toned down um, the sweetness is there mixed with the, the cooked apple. Ah, oh, boy, there's a little bit of cinnamon, all right, but I'm going to say there's even maybe it was the ginger, a little bit of ginger, a wee bit of clove. I think I mentioned that mixed in with the vanilla and the marzipan. My vocabulary is uh, I'm running out of descriptors. <laughs> Sometimes I have to be reminded, <clears throat> but uh, you know there is a slight bit of almost like a mossiness to it. Um, yeah, something like that. But to, there's, there's something there I've been trying to identify, and it's going to probably take me a while to, to figure it out. But uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's funny. I've been into the um, the Isla whiskeys where we're doing a lot of you know rubber tires and. <laughs> You know, creosote bilings and things like that, and 
And we're sort of now uh, 180 degrees away from that. So, but um, it's uh, you definitely got the wood. There's the wood. It has a medium finish, at least a medium finish, and it does coat your mouth. And, and, and there is that, the slight bits of tobacco in the background. Nothing overpowering though, but it's mixed in with the, it's mixed in with the, the sweet oranges and the cooked apples. So it's a nice, it's just a nice mix. You know, there's, there's not anything biting. There's nothing astringent about it. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of finding it, uh, it just seems well balanced. You know, I mean, I read a lot of reviews on this, uh, I'll be honest with you. So I, I was ready for anything, and uh, I don't know. I, I might be enjoying this more uh, because I've read the reviews, and there were a couple of, and not the majority, but there was a couple of, and they're not, these are not your real, I don't call them the, 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 the top reviewers. Uh, the top reviewers gave this a good, they gave it a pretty good rating, so. Uh, some are still working on it, so they're still trying to figure it out. But they're, they still they, they like it. Um, one of the one of the big reviewers I follow really uh, spoke highly of it. I think that's help that kind of helped me, you know, spend the two hundred dollars because that's a lot of money for a whiskey. But anyways, um, the palate is uh, medium in length. Uh, it's well balanced. This is a well balanced whiskey. It has a lot of body. Um, overall, I'm not spending the time on this that I have in some of my other whiskeys. It's not that I'm not enjoying this. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to condense my uh, my videos a little bit. So, um, I, what I can say about it is, uh, it has uh, I think a lot to offer. A lot of layers. It has some complexity to it. And uh, I certainly would recommend it, uh, you know, so uh, do you run out and spend $200 on something like this? I don't know. I don't know what your budget is. This is a really tough one nowadays because I, what are you getting in, in BC that's under $200 that's 18 years? There's some crappy 18-year-olds. Uh, <laughs> I can buy them. I got stung on an 18-year-old just you know, a few weeks ago, I, and it's a reputable, you know, um, brand, but in its 12s and 15s and 14s, it, 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 it did well, but the 18th was a disappointment. So you're spending all that money, and uh, I'm telling you, at $200, uh, if you can afford it, this isn't a risk. You're going to like it. And um, I guess that's the, ba the best I can say. My, my palate, um, I don't think my palate's extremely different. I think it's different. You know, so there's always a risk that what I'm, you know, what I'm recommending that, you know, that possibly you might think that the $200 is a bit much for what you're getting. You're not going to be disappointed in that it, it, it's, it, it's a drink that you, you, you're going to be devastated. Uh, I think that just now we're spending so much money on these whiskeys. I think it's a little harder. It'd be nice if uh, you could slip into a... A bar that has a bottle of this and have uh, you know have a you know have a couple grams of it. See what you think of it. Personally, I like it. I'm going to give this uh, an 87, uh, and I think that's a pretty good score. And my scoring, I I, I I don't know if you got used to my scoring by now, but I'm a little tougher than some of the other. I, I don't think I'm tougher. I just think I need room for the future. And if I score too high in the beginning, there's no room down the road. So. You know, I think any anything in the you know the mid '80s is a good whiskey, and when you get up in the, in the higher '80s, it's a damn good whiskey. So that's uh, maybe how I could explain it is it's a damn good whiskey. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to uh, finish off as I always do in uh, reminding you to drink wisely and intelligently. Do not drink and drive. And until the next time, slash.